back to Pogmas' channel. In this video, we will walk you through the configuration process for Pogmas Smart 615 KP all-in-one solar inverter. To begin, press Set button to enter the setting menu. Setting 0 is used to exceed the settings menu. Setting 1 is for configuring the hour power priority. The SUV option prioritize solar power for charging first and for load supply second. If solar energy is insufficient, both utility power and solar power will charge the battery simultaneously, with the excess utility power used to support the load. The battery power is only activated when utility power is unavailable. The SOL option is the solar first mode. When solar power is unavailable or the battery voltage drops below the value set in setting 4, the inverter will switch to utility power to support the load. The UDI option represents the utility first mode. In this mode, also utility power is prioritized. The inverter will still prioritize solar energy to maximize its use. When solar power is insufficient to supply all loads, the utility power will be used as a supplement. If solar energy is abundant and there is excess capacity, the surplus energy will be used to charge the battery. The battery power is only activated when utility power is unavailable. The SPU option signifies solar battery utility priority. Solar power will be prioritized for load supply. If solar energy is insufficient, battery power will supplement the load. When the battery voltage drops below the value set in setting 4, the output power will switch to utility power. When the battery voltage rises above the value set in setting 5, the output power will automatically switch back to the battery inverter mode. Setting 2 allows you to set AC output frequency, which can be configured to either 50 Hz or 60 Hz. Setting 3 is for setting the AC input voltage range. The UPS mode covers a range of 90 to 140 volts and the ABL mode covers 85 to 140 volts. A wider range accommodates broader input voltage fluctuation, allowing the inverter to continue supplying power to load even when utility voltage varies significantly, ensuring continuous and stable power supply. In the settings, it's suitable for area with significant utility voltage fluctuations. A narrow range will cause the inverter to disconnect quickly for protection when the voltage excesses that range, preventing damage to the equipment. This setting is ideal for area with stable utility voltage. Setting 4 configures the threshold for switching the output power from battery power to utility power. Setting 5 configures the threshold for switching the output power from utility power to battery power. Setting 6 is for configuring the charging mode. The SNU option enables simultaneous charging by solar power and utility power, with solar power prioritized for charging the battery. When solar power is insufficient, utility power is activated to charge the battery simultaneously. In bypass mode, both solar and utility power can charge the battery simultaneously, while in invert mode, only solar power is allowed. The OSO option only allows solar charging, with solar power serving as the solar source for battery charging. Setting 7 configures the battery charging current with a maximum setting of 140 Ampere. Setting 8 allows you to select the battery type. Available option includes GEL batteries, 14 cell lithium iron phosphate batteries, 15 cell lithium iron phosphate battery. 16 cell lithium iron phosphate batteries, 13 cell thermal lithium batteries, 14 cell thermal lithium batteries, no battery mode, custom battery type, cell fluid seed batteries, and fluid lead seed batteries. If you choose no battery mode, you can operate without connecting a battery. However, due to the instability of photovoltaic power, solar energy alone cannot support the load, so both solar power and utility power must be connected. 
If you select a custom mode, you can customize all battery charging parameters. If you do not choose user option, subsequent settings related to custom battery charging parameters will not be displayed. For this demonstration, we will select the user option to provide a more comprehensive overview. Setting 9 configures the battery boost charging voltage. Setting 10 configures the duration of the boost charge. When a battery voltage reaches the boost charge voltage set in setting 9, the inverter will switch from bulk charging stage to the boost charging stage in the three-stage charging process. During the boost charging stage, the inverter will charge the battery at a constant boost charge voltage from the duration set in setting 10. Setting 11 configures the flow charging voltage. Setting 12 configures the battery over discharge voltage. Setting 13 configures the delay time for automatic shutdown after battery voltage reaches the threshold set in setting 12. The default delay time is 5 seconds. Setting 14 configures the battery low voltage alarm. When the battery voltage falls below this value, the inverter will issue a low voltage warning. Setting 15 configures the discharge limit voltage. When the battery voltage falls below this value, the inverter will immediately terminate output to prevent the over-discharge of the battery. Setting 16 enables or disables the battery equalization charging function. Setting 17 configures the equalization charging voltage. Setting 18 configures equalization charging duration. Setting 19 configures equalization delay time. If the equalization charge duration reaches the value set in setting 18, but the battery voltage does not reach the value set in setting 17, the inverter will extend equalization time. The extension duration is configured in this setting. After the extending duration ends, the equalization mode will exceed, even if the battery voltage has not reached the equalization voltage. Setting 20 configures the equalization interval with a default of once every 30 days. Setting 21 enables or disables the immediate equalization charging function. Setting 22 enables or disables the power saving mode function. Setting 23 enables or disables the automatic restart function after an overload. If the inverter shuts down automatically due to an overload, it will attempt to restart after 3 minutes. After 5 restart attempts, the inverter will cease further attempts. Setting 25 enables or disables the buzzer. Setting 26 configures the output mode switch over prompt. When this function is enabled, the inverter will emit a prompt sound when the output power switches. Setting 27 enables or disables the automatic switch over to bypass mode during an overload. When this function is enabled, the inverter will switch to bypass mode to support the load during an overload. Setting 28 configures the utility charging current. The maximum utility charging current can be set to 80 Ampere. Setting 30 configures the RS-485 communication code, which is primarily used to distinguishing inverters in parallel system and defining the master and slave units. No manual configuration is required. Setting 31 is used to configure parallel operation mode. If a single inverter is operating independently, select the SIG. If multiple inverters are operating in parallel, corresponding parallel settings need to be made based on the specific situation. Here we will outline 5 parallel operation modes and their configurations. Before we begin, let's assume that setting 38 has configured the AC output voltage to 120 volts. The first mode is single phase power operation. In this mode, connect the L1 and L2 terminals of each inverter to the L line and the N terminals to the N line. For this power operation mode, all inverters should have setting 31 configured to PAL. Each inverter will output 120 volts on the LN lines. The second mode is two-phase power operation. Connect the L1 and L2 terminals of each inverter to the same phase. 
two inverters to the L1 phase and two to the outer phase. Set to all inverters connect to the L1 phase to 2P0 and those connected to the outer phase to 2P1. In this configuration, the phase angle between L1 and L2 will be 120 degrees, with L1 end and L2 end each outputting 120 volts and L1 L2 outputting 208 volts. The third mode continues the wiring from the second mode with sliding adjustment to the settings. This allows for different output voltages. Inverters connected to the L1 phase should be mindset to 2P0, while those connected to the L2 phase should be set to 2P2. This configuration creates a 180 degree phase angle between L1 and L2, resulting in 120 volt output on L1 N and L2 N and 240 volt on L1 L2. The fourth mode is a split phase power operation. Here, connect the L1 terminal of the inverter to L1 phase and the L2 terminal to the L2 phase and the N terminal to the N phase. All settings should be configured to PAL. In this configuration, the inverter will output 120 volts on both L1 N and L2 N and 240 volts on L1 L2. The fifth mode is three-phase power operation. In this mode, the L1 and L2 terminals of each inverter are connected to the same phase, L1, L2, or L3. Set inverters connected to L1 phase to 3P1, those on the L2 phase to 3P2, and those on the L3 phase to 3P3. The phase angle between phase 1 and phase 2, phase 2 and phase 3, and phase 1 and phase 3 will all be 120 degrees. As a result, L1, L2, L2, L3, and L1, L3 lights will output 208 volts, while L1, N, L2, N, and L3, N lights will each output 120 volts. Setting 32 enables or disables the RS-485 communication function. When disabled, the 485 port can be used for upper computer and remote monitoring. If 485 or BMS is selected, the port is used for corresponding BMS communication. Setting 33 configures the BMS communication protocol. If setting 32 is selected to 45 or CAN communication, this setting allows you to select the specific protocol. Setting 35 configures the battery under voltage recovery voltage. Once the battery stops discharging due to under voltage, it will resume inverter output when the battery voltage reaches this value. Setting 37 configures the voltage level at which the battery will resume charging after reaching a fully charged stage. Setting 38 sets the AC output voltage. Setting 39 limits the charging current. If BMS communication is not established, this setting does not need to be configured. If LC BMS is selected, the inverter will use the BMS maximum value as the charging current limit. If LCIMV is selected, the inverter will use its own maximum charging current as the upper limit. If LCSET is selected, the inverter will use the value set in setting 7 as the maximum charging current. Settings 40 through 45 configure 3 battery charging periods. Setting 46 enables or disables time of use charging. If this setting is enabled, the output power priority will automatically change to SBU mode. During the set charging periods, the inverter will use utility power to charge the battery. The settings 47 through 52 configure three battery discharging periods. Setting 53 enables or disables time of use discharging. When this setting is enabled, the output power priority switches to UTI mode. Even if setting 46 is enabled, the output power priority mode will be overridden by the setting in setting 53. The inverter will discharge the battery to power the load during the set time period.
The time of use charging and discharging function allow for efficient and intelligent distribution of power based on local electricity tariff and peak value demand, avoiding the use of utility power during peak hours with high electricity costs and instead utilizing storage energy. This ensures stable power supply while optimizing economy efficiency. Utility power can be used to charge the battery when electricity prices are lower. Setting 54 sets the current date. Setting 55 sets the current time. Setting 56 enables or disables the leakage protection function. Setting 57 configures the charging termination current. When the charging current falls below this value, the inverter will stop charging. If BMS communication is enabled, setting 58 to 62 can be customized. If BMS communication is not selected, the setting will not be displayed. Setting 58 configures discharge warning SOC. The inverter will issue an alarm when the battery stage of charge falls below this value. Setting 59 configures discharge cutoff SOC. The inverter will stop battery discharge when the SOC falls below this value. Setting 60 configures charge cutoff SOC. The inverter will stop charging when the battery's SOC reaches this value. Setting 61 configures SOC at which the charging output source switches from battery power to utility power. Setting 62 configures SOC at which the charging output source switches from utility power to battery power. Setting 63 configures the automatic switching of the MPE bonding function. When enabled, the MPE connection will automatically switch. This function ensures proper system grounding and safety, especially in off-grid or backup power scenarios, preventing potential grounding issues and ensuring compliance with safety regulations. It helps maintain system stability and protect the system from electrical faults. Setting 60A configures the AC output phase mode. 180 degrees indicates split phase output mode with L1 and L2 not paralleled and a phase angle of 180 degrees between the two phases. L1N and L2N will each output 120 volts and L1, L2 will output 240 volts. Zero degrees indicates single phase output mode with a phase angle of zero degrees. In this mode, L1 and L2 can be paralleled, and the L1N and L2N light voltages will each be 120 volt. Setting 73 configures the generator's maximum charging current. Setting 74 configures generator input power with a maximum setting of 10 kW. Setting 76 configures CD ratio. Setting 77 calibrates anti backflow arrow power. That concludes the explanation of the post on Smart 6.5 KV settings. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.